Hello everyone, once again right here in Kasese District, Western Uganda with the Agape of Hope and Mr. Elias. Nice to meet you Mr. Elias. You're welcome. Yeah, can you tell us what uh, Agape of Hope all about, what you do, when it was started and why it was started, at least I need that statement, why it was started. Was it started uh, out of study or there is something behind that and that's why we all need to know right now. Oh, th thank you. Yeah, you are welcome at Agap of Hope Female Youth Development Association. Thank this you. is a, a local NGO that was started for the purpose of uh, helping the vulnerable young mothers and the uh, girls because we saw they lacked a lot of, uh, they had a lot of issues that, that surround their lives. The government had actually neglected girls when it comes to the issue of, of uh, youth. So as Agap of Hope, we carried our search and we found out that most girls move from villages to town in search of pet jobs like being babysitters, working in restaurants. But when they reach here, they also, you find in homes, they don't pay them. So you find a girl moves from home to home. And in that way, uh, you find a girl is pregnant. And so a girl came out, came from home, from their village, when like she's, she dropped out of school, you know, and maybe she was pregnant, but when she reaches here, again she gets pregnant because she's moving to try to get a livelihood. So as Agap of Hope, we, we said, no, how can we help these girls? So for us, we started this organization to focus on girls only. So we are focusing on only on girls, and it's the only organization actually that is uh, focusing on girls. But then we have uh, three programs, which I'm going to mention to you. Yeah. yeah. So we have uh, reproduct adults and reproductive health. Mm -hmm. Under this program, we do maternal health promotion. We look at these mothers, these young mothers, if they get pregnant, can they go to the health center? To, to go to the antenatal visit so that they can complete and then produce at the healthy facility. Then we have another program called Menstrual Hygiene Management and this is actually our major program that we are doing under productive health. Here the girls, you know girls, some of them dropped out of school because they lacked reusable sanitary pads. You find the girl is on menstruation but because it's on menstruation she will not tell the senior woman neither when she reaches home she will not even tell the mother so this girl will just stay at home and say you know I'm, i have a headache i have a headache then this girl stays like uh, five days home and she she's missing the class so now we said no let us make let us train these girls how to make their own reusable sanitary pads so that they can be making them themselves not buying it, not, not going to the shops to buy, but they should make themselves. So we give them a scale, we provide the materials to the schools, we train the senior women teachers, and then we train also the girls, we provide materials to the schools, and they do their own reusable sanitary pads. So we have that program, we, are, we have tried to move to 60 schools in the Kansas district. And uh, we involve the, the district education officer, we involve even the RIDC, actually the local leadership of the district are all involved in promotion of this program. Then, uh, with this program, we, we follow the, the, the girl child from school to where this child comes from. Now we go to the parent to sustain this parent because this is the parent who fails to give the child a, a, a pad or maybe even failing to buy a pad because of poverty. You know, the place here in Kasese district and the, uh, we are really poverty striking. But you, then the families, you find the family cannot even afford to buy a reusable center pad in, in addition to the food supply. 
so they take a priority and these girls now room around and in a, like they can ask these border border boys that you give me something then maybe after giving 20000 something like that then the next time this border border guy will ask for something for something love that is sex in exchange of a reasonable center part then this is the girl who will be pregnant and then drops out of school and her life actually almost ends there now for that matter uh, we we train the parents what there is a program called the parenting we train how a parent can look for the child can care for this girl child and then can also provide the necessities so we also train the parents with the, how to make the center pads and how to care for the child for these child children at home so that's a program that's running but also uh, girls who have got uh, pregnant they are already victims uh, we you know being pregnant is not the end of life so we we bring them here at agape of hope we invite them to come and do skilling so we have another program called vocational skills training for young mothers and girls especially those who, who got pregnant early like the teenage mother then those girls who, who were not even pregnant, but because of lack of school fees, they dropped out of school, and they are all here. So when they are here, we give them skills like tailoring, uh, hairdressing, and knitting. Then we also accompany those trainings with entrepreneurship skills, so that the girl, when a girl is fully trained here, will go and do business out of the training. So this girl can start earning money. Yeah, so those three programs of uh, hairdressing, tailoring, and knitting, were under these programs, <coughs> we have actually trained many girls. Uh, and uh, so far, in, in four years, we have trained like uh, 250 girls. Yes. That is really good, <coughs> Mr. Elias. <laughs> really. Most of them are, are in the casino uh, market here. They are making products like clothes. Some of them have started own saloons and they're also training. We are happy. Some of them have also started training other girls. Mm. And we said this is very nice. Even those who are, who are training in tailoring, they also have got tailor, they bought machines. And now they are, some of them are also training. And a few of them, they also employed in some institutions around the Even some of them, even some organizations call us, do you have people who can train for us? Then we say, we send them. For example, of recent, there is an organization in Karugutu in Doroko. They asked us to send them trainers. Two of them left yesterday, actually, from here. One is a hairdresser and another one is a tailor. So they will be getting money. So otherwise, we are happy because of this program. And uh, the result of this program is that this, these girls are now earning some little income from what they learned and uh, they are now making a living. Wow. Yeah. I'm really impressed by this. I'm extremely happy for the work that you're doing. But there is something I would really like to know. Yes. Do we have other organizations around who are doing exactly the same thing that you're doing? Yeah, we have some organizations around that are doing what we do. Uh, we have some organizations like, uh, you know, some of them are vocational schools. For them, they are just like a school. Like we have, uh, we have schools like uh, Renzori Vocational, it is just around here. Um, I, there is also even Kodea that has just started but for us we've been in the field for about uh, 10 years so we have other organizations actually doing that mm. Yeah, and, and what is keeping us is that for us we have introduced other programs like designing, we are adding value now so with that we are like we are competing mm. and uh, we are now doing very well because for us we add value on the products that we make wow. yeah that is really really good and now mr elias we would like to know do you have other people who are helping you in uh, 
doing this work. Oh, yes. People who are helping you doing this work. Do you have some, uh, like, uh, you may be, of course, you are an educated man. You might be, maybe, I have my hobbies that I studied with, mm -hmm. and then you tell them, we have this and that program, and we'd like you to stand with us in doing this and this. Do you have different rights sometimes, or you do everything all by yourself, or you have some other NGOs, you know, moving with you in this journey? Oh, thank you, thank you very much. Actually, we we started as a, a new organization. We are helping ourselves. We didn't have anybody to support us. But when we when we are on the way, when we are already on the way, then people are like, "But for you are doing a good work." Now, like, like that district, they came here, they said, okay, I think we are going to support the girls. We went to the graduation, we'll be giving them a hall and everything. So when, like, they are graduating, we don't pay anything. The district gives us, actually, a venue and everything. Then we, we didn't stop there, but we are trying to have some well-wishers and some organizations actually we have an organization called the foundation for community development and empowerment mm -hmm. fcde they train our staff in his skills uh, also in capacity building fundraising so actually we are here because of the support from foundation for community development yeah. and they, they supported you in our tailoring with the designing machines then even they supported our saloon. So we are really very grateful. And also with the program of uh, reusable sanitary pads, uh, we have uh, a funder who, who, who funded us actually for three years. And this is the Child Rights and Violence Prevention Fund, CRVP. Uh, they are the head office in Kambala, but they are based in USA. And they, they are doing a lot for us, actually. So they gave us the materials and trained our staff. So all our, so all the support with for reusable center parties actually is from Sierra VP. We are happy for that also. Yeah. Yeah. My okay. The question that is coming to you right now is very tricky mm. because so many people. We think working or getting involved in an organization, it's like someone is seated in a gold mine. Mm -hmm. But right now, I would like to find out, how do you, when you get the, those donors, when you receive that money, how do you do the accountabilities for it? Oh. Without, you know, uh, taking some, you know, hiding some amount of money and all that. Oh, thank you. Actually, this, this organization, Agap of Hope, for us, we, one of our values is uh, transparency and accountability with the teamwork. Whenever we receive any assistance from a well-wisher or a funder, uh, we have uh, a bank account where we put our money. We have a finance officer who handles all the books of accounts and the, I'm the accounting officer. So all the money that we get is spent on the purpose that is meant for. Like uh, if we are buying machines, we will invite the, the teacher to give us the necessary machines that are required. So we involve all our team, all our team, and then we go and buy the, the machines and bring them here. And whichever money is being used before we use the money, we first sit as a team, we make a worker plan and a budget. Then after there, then we make a requisition, and after, after making a requisition, we go and withdraw money, then we bring it, we give it to the project officer, and that one now goes to the field, or somebody goes to, to buy materials for us, and they bring receipts. Yeah, and even those who go to the field, they also bring uh, a report with the accountability of what they spend. And if there is any balance, they put the balance to the treasury, and next time they will use it. This is why we have stayed. 
here. I'm really overwhelmed by your response. You know, trust, being trusted, and it's really something difficult when it comes to this century. Yeah. Yeah. So I would like even to find out how do you recruit your staff? Oh. Okay. Do you recruit uh, because you know someone or the person is related to you, or you just make an advert and people apply and then you give the jobs to those ones who are supposed to take the jobs that one also yeah i would like to know Th thank you i think we, with the training that we have got in the capacity building for us when we are making a recruitment for staff yeah. we make an advert actually the body sits and then we say well, ah, we, we advertise and we we make actually an advert on, on radio we even put some some advert on uh, public in public places. Then people bring applications. But uh, we have a problem in because very many people are unemployed, especially the youth. Actually, I get a lot of applications, like a hundred for one post. That is the challenge we have. So our recruitment process actually is uh, we make an advert, we we, we conduct interviews, then. We, we should list. So it is a actually a, a, a transparent process that we follow. Now again, I would like to find out from you because normally when people are helping, yeah, there is what they call a, you know, they call the segregation. Mm. I don't know how you do it. When you're helping people, do you guess on this one is from this and this tribe or about the age, education, where some be like, this person maybe studied a little or mm. this one finished a level, I will not help them. Maybe let me help those ones that didn't get any education. So how do you do it? Do you help according to gender or age? Yes, some source of income. How do you do it? Oh, th thank you. Thank you. Other for us, our our sisters is is non segregative. Uh, if we are targeting our beneficiaries, we are not saying this is this is religion. We don't base on religion or no tribe. We we just support the beneficiary as they are. And like for us, we are focusing on the youth. When it is a program of the youth, we really have to look at the youth. We are not going to bring in the old ones because there is something to to to, to give them. Or well, if we are targeting the youth, we really give it to the youth. If we are targeting the school going children, those in school, we really go to the schools, we talk to the management and we give our assistance according to the beneficiaries we target. This is also very impressive, yeah. at least I'm impressed, I'm touched by this. Mm -hmm. So right now, I just want you to tell us the challenges. What are the challenges that you have got to, since 2005 that you started this and up to now, 2020? Tell us the challenges that you have faced. Tell us, as in, let the world know mm -hmm. the agape of love, mm -hmm. what they have faced during all this time. Yeah. Actually, as you know, a name, agape of hope, mm -hmm. we really have hope that our community, our, our, our vision is that we should have a community that, is, uh, that has good livelihood, yeah. whose lives are good. Now, as we work with the beneficiaries, with our community, we have faced a number of challenges to mention uh, when, like, when we are dealing with these young girls, uh, here, like here at the vocational school that we are conducting, we find these girls, really, there is poverty at home, uh, which is actually putting many families Many of our girls, many of our children, just at home, just leaving them at home because, like, they are lacking a lot of necessities, and it is also being transformed here because of poverty. We find we are we may not reach where we want to reach, and uh, there is also another challenge of uh, there is also 
teenage pregnancies, the number of girls getting pregnant every day is increasing. And this is also attributed to the poverty levels that is accruing. But also, like, after training these girls, we have a challenge of uh, startup kits, startup materials to support these girls. After we train them, we give them the skill, yes, but then they go to the communities. When they reach there, they, you find they may not manage to buy a sewing machine or some hand dry for girls to start their hair saloons. So, really, we have a challenge of providing startup kits to these girls. So, that's another big challenge we have. Also, we, we have a challenge of uh, communication, like we are going to the field, like our staff want to go to a sub-county like Chondo, which is far, we find we have a challenge of communication, like if we want to reach there in time, you find we may not reach there because uh, we don't have the means of, uh, of transport. It's also another challenge that we have at organization level. But with, with all that, we are trying to, to see that we manage within our, our limit. Yeah. Ah, the challenge is yeah. Yeah, also touching, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. So, right this moment, I'm going to give you a chance. Yeah. Is there anything that you would like to tell the world? Something that you would like, maybe, whether it is assistance, whether it is what? Do you like anything? Now the chance is yours. Just pour out your heart and tell oh, them. <laughs> thank you. I think I have a lot, but I mm. will mention. Mm. Uh, as an organization, I would love to tell the world, to tell people who have mercy for uh, helpless beneficiaries that if there is uh, any possibility, really we need support. Like in terms of funding, we need support. Uh, and also we need technical advice, like from people like you. We need also a lot of capacity building, training. But all that calls for support in terms of finance. When finance is there, I think we can plan and have that. Then we, we also need uh, our people, especially the young girls that we have, we have targeting, we, we need them to be supported like with the startup kits, like uh, we give them sewing machines when they graduate. So if we can have a well-wisher to support us, please, you are welcome. And I think I tell you this, I take, you should take this one as a, a, a request from us that please, we are here, we need people to assist us. Yeah. So you have seen everything and you have heard out there, you need to assist someone, just don't wait, do something, people really need help and we are calling upon the whole world, if you can do anything, if you can assist someone, if you can assist these NGOs, like Mr. Elias said, please don't wait, we welcome you, thank you. Thank you.